Hello everyone, I'm Elias Issa and I will be presenting the globalization of Disneyland case study. In the late 1970s, the Walt Disney Company made the decision to begin expanding internationally. As seen on this map, in addition to the United States, Walt Disney was able to expand in France, China and Japan. Tokyo Disneyland was the first Disney theme park built outside of the United States. The construction of this park was very risky since it had many enterprise environmental factors, such as the weather. The winter season in Japan might impact the attendance, and Disney was unsure as to whether the Japanese would embrace the Disney characters. Since it was risky, they opted for a risk minimization strategy and signed a licensing agreement with Oriental Land Company, in which Walt Disney will grant Oriental Land Company the right to use its designs, name, and Disney characters. In this way, Oriental Land Company will own the park and will bear all the construction and operation costs of this park. The profits won't be shared, Walt Disney will only receive royalty payments, 10% admission fees, and 5% of the sales on food, beverages, and merchandise. Oriental Land will bear the cost of the construction of the park and will have the, ri the high risks in comparison to Walt Disney who will have low risks. Tokyo Disneyland was regularly been the most profitable Disney park and uh, the revenue uh, produced by Tokyo Disneyland is larger than all other national theme parks combined. Oriental Land Company was able to pay off its debt after three years from opening the park since it was very profitable. Later, they tried to merge their national identity with Tokyo Disneyland by adding attractions with distinctly uh, Japanese qualities. In 1984, the Walt Disney Company made a decision to build a second foreign theme park, this time in Europe. There were highly optimistic financial projections established for Euro Disney based on the expectation of 11 million visitors for the first year and 16 million visitors yearly after the turn of the 21st century. The Walt Disney Company viewed the Euro Disney theme park as a potentially profitable revenue generator since the company would have a leisure and an entertainment monopoly in Europe. So for that reason, Walt Disney made a joint venture that was designed around a profit maximization strategy. Walt Disney Company realized that it had made a serious mistake by not investing heavily in property development surrounding the theme parks. So they agreed to build 18,200 hotel rooms surrounding Euro Disney by 2017. And that's a photo of me and uh, Euro Disney. I was lucky enough to visit this amazing park and have my childhood dreams come true. As part of the joint venture agreement, the company would receive 49% of the profits, 10% royalties on admissions, 5% royalties on food, beverage and merchandise sales, 5% of gross revenues of themed hotels, and the management fee equivalent to 3% of revenue. The Walt Disney Company recognized that for people to come back to theme parks again and again, they must add new attractions, build adjacent theme parks on closely related topics. So for that reason, they agreed, agreed to build Walt Disney Studio Park. This new theme park included the history of films, uh, including cinema, cartoons, and uh, it shows how films are made. Just like Euro Disney, this park was part of the original joint venture relationship rather than just a licensing agreement. In 2013, the park hosted approximately 4.4 million guests, making it to the third most visited amusement park in Europe. In 1997, Tokyo Disneyland recognized the need for a second theme park because attendance was leveling off. They believed that the Japanese would not be as impressed uh, with the movie making as were Americans and uh, Europeans. Instead, the decision was to build the Tokyo Disney Sea for about $3.5 billion based on uh, recognition of the Japanese love for the sea. The new park would be more adult themed, including faster, scarier rides, 
and shows designed for an older audience. The Oriental Land Company would have preferred to minimize its risks by having a joint venture, but eventually negotiated a licensing agreement for the $3.5 billion theme park. In 2013, Tokyo Disneyland hosted 17.21 million visitors, moving its ranking to the world's most visited theme park, surpassing Disneyland, California. In 1989, negotiations began to bring the original Disneyland to Hong Kong. Hong Kong was recognized as an international finance center and the gateway to China. So Walt Disney negotiated a joint venture agreement with the Chinese government where the government contributed with $2.9 billion to build the park and Walt Disney Company contributed by $314 million. The Walt Disney Company recognized that the Chinese were not familiar with many of the Disney products, including comics of Disney characters, such as Mickey Mouse. Because of the potential risk of limited brand awareness, marketing and advertising would be critical. In addition, Walt Disney saw many other risks such as the weather condition, the political uncertainty, the uncertain market condition, the Chinese culture, and the competition with an existing park called the Ocean Park. However, the Chinese government saw benefits behind this project such as attracting millions of tourists a year, creating thousands of jobs, improving the quality of life, enhancing Hong Kong's international image, providing Hong Kong with a net economic benefit of billions of dollars over 40 years. It's worth mentioning that uh, during the design, the Feng Chu culture was taken into consideration. Feng Chu is a local culture where numbers, colors, and images can represent good luck as well as bad luck. Later on, we will see some of the examples uh, of the Hong Kong Disneyland design that took into consideration the Feng Shui culture. Ocean Park Hong Kong opened in 1977. At that time, the park had a monopoly on the theme park entertainment in Hong Kong since it was the only theme park there. When a deal was reached in 1999 to bring Disneyland to Hong Kong, it sounded like a death sentence for Ocean Park Hong Kong because it did not have the financial strength of the Walt Disney Company. Ocean Park's strength was the fact that it's seen as an educational park rather than an entertainment park. Later, a re-engineering effort was initiated for the park. A subway line was built for the park, additional hotels were built as well, and the government also loaned the park money. The park successfully fended off the threat of Hong Kong Disneyland and hosted foreign visitors who wanted to visit both parks. The Walt Disney Company opened Shanghai Disneyland in 2015. It is three times the size of Hong Kong Disneyland. The park was financed 30% with debt and 70% with equity. The Walt Disney Company has a 43% stake in the joint venture with the remaining 57% controlled by the state-run holding company, Shanghai Shandy Group. Walt Disney will continue its globalization efforts and expand elsewhere over the next several decades. Two additional theme parks will be attached to Shanghai Disneyland sometimes in the future. Walt Disney Company may focus on vacation resorts surrounding uh, the theme parks in the future. But to get people to the theme parks, the company must get young children acquainted or hooked on Disney characters. In China, the company is getting children acquainted with its brand name at an early age. The Walt Disney Company operates dozens of English language schools throughout China, where Disney characters and stories are used as teaching aids. What is the fundamental difference between a licensing agreement and a joint venture as related to the Disney theme parks? In the licensing agreement, the licensor grants the licensee the right to produce and sell goods, apply a brand name or trademark, or use patent technology owned by the licensor. Same as what happened in Tokyo Disneyland, where the Walt Disney made a licensing agreement with Oriental Land Company and gave them the right to imitate their park and use the Disney characters in their rides and stores. However, in a joint venture, the parties agree to develop for a finite time a new entity and the new assets by contributing shared equity, same as what we saw in Disneyland Paris, where there was a joint venture agreement to build the park. 
The licensing agreement is considered as a risk minimization strategy for the licensor and risk maximization strategy for the licensees, whereas the joint venture is considered as a risk maximization strategy for the licensors and a risk minimization strategy for the licensee. The profits for the licensor are in the form of guaranteed minimum payment and royalties on sales in a licensing agreement, same as we saw in the case of uh, Tokyo Disneyland. However, in a joint venture, the profits are shared between both parties. No financial support is provided by the licensor in a licensing agreement. However, both parties are equally invested in the project in terms of money, time, and effort in a joint venture. The theme park is owned by the licensee and the project is managed only by the licensee in a licensing agreement. However, in a joint venture, the theme park would be in a shared ownership and the project is managed by both parties. Why did the Walt Disney Company opt for a licensing agreement for Tokyo Disneyland? Walt Disney Company opted for a risk minimization strategy they were not sure how uh, would the enterprise environmental factors affect the acceptance of the theme park. The winter season in Japan uh, could impact the attendance and Disney was unsure as to whether the Japanese would embrace the Disney characters. And also the fact that it was the first theme park outside uh, the United States also scared uh, Walt Disney and uh, led them to minimize the risk by following uh, the risk minimization strategy and choosing a licensing agreement. Why did the Walt Disney Company opt for a joint venture agreement with Euro Disneyland? They opted for a profit maximization strategy. Uh, they actually viewed the Euro Disney theme park as a potentially profitable revenue generator for decades since the company would have a leisure and entertainment monopoly in Europe. And they also believed that they made a serious mistakes in Disneyland, Walt Disney World, and Tokyo Disneyland by not investing heavily in property development surrounding the theme park. So they wanted to maximize their profits and went to the profit maximization strategy, which is a joint venture agreement. Does the size of the theme park have a bearing on whether a licensing agreement or a joint venture should be selected? The size of the theme park should not have a bearing on, the, on whether a licensing agreement or a joint venture should be selected. The size may have an impact on the risk and cost of the theme park. However, it all depends on the company whether it wants to go for a risk minimization strategy or, or a risk and profit maximization strategy. If they opt for a risk minimization strategy, then they should negotiate on a licensing agreement. If they opt for a profit and risk maximization strategy, they should negotiate for a joint venture. As we saw with uh, Shanghai Disneyland, it was three times the size of Hong Kong Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Uh, uh, and Walt Disney, sorry, company signed a joint venture opting for a profit maximization strategy despite all the risks. What is the difference between a theme park and a vacation resort? A theme park is an amusement park that bases its structures and attractions around its natural theme, such as Disneyland, where all its attractions are based on Disney characters. A vacation resort is a place that provides travelers with everything they need, such as accommodation, food, and activities. I believe that, the, that building a theme park has more risk since the attendance might level off as people may not return to the park after two or three visits, and some cultures may not be familiar with the park theme. If the goal is a vacation resort, should the, should the Walt Disney Company negotiate a licensing agreement or a joint venture? Walt Disney Company should negotiate for a joint venture if the goal is a vacation resort. Building a vacation resort is usually not a risky investment and will definitely generate lots of profits. So Walt Disney should opt for a profit maximization strategy and negotiate for a joint venture. Why was it necessary to build the Walt Disney Studio Park as part of your Disneyland? The Walt Disney Company recognized that in order to get people to come back to the theme parks again and again, New attractions must be added, adjacent theme parks on closely related topics must be built, 
or both to be done? Why was it necessary to construct Tokyo Disney Sea? Tokyo Disneyland recognized that the, uh, the need for a second theme park because attendance was leveling off. As seen in this table, from 1991 to 1997, the attendance is not increasing. Between 75 and 80 percent of the visitors to Tokyo Disneyland were repeated visitors. Even with new attractions being built each year, there was apprehension that people might not return to the park after two or three visits. For the agreement with Tokyo Disney Sea, would the Walt Disney Company have preferred a licensing agreement or a joint venture? Even though the Walt Disney Company believed that the Tokyo Disney Sea did have some risks, I believe that they would have opted for a joint venture as a profit maximization strategy. The success of Tokyo Disneyland made it quite apparent that the Walt Disney Company would have been better off financially had it chosen a joint venture. As seen in the table below, later in 2013, uh, Disney Sea became the fourth in the worldwide ranking with 14 million attendants. If Walt Disney made a joint venture, they would have gained lots of profits. What did the Walt Disney Company see as the risks with Hong Kong Disneyland? There were many risks uh, with the Hong Kong Disneyland. Uh, the Chinese people's willingness to accept the American theme park, the Chinese culture that is not familiar with the Disney characters, potential cost overruns, same as what happened with Oriental Land Company, where the financial cost of Tokyo Disneyland was almost double the estimated budget, costing 180 billion yen rather than the projected 100 billion yen. We have the weather conditions, uncertain market conditions, political uncertainty, a change in the government's policy for acting as a financial partner, legal barriers affecting the joint venture, counterfeit products, and finally the competition with Ocean Park, which was the only and most successful park in Hong Kong, and its strength was the fact that it is seen as an educational park rather than an entertainment park. What is the Feng Shu culture? Feng Shu is a local culture where numbers, colors, and images can represent good luck as well as bad luck. Buildings and structures must face a certain direction depending on their surroundings. There must be a balance between the elements of earth, wood, and fire. The Walt Disney Company hired a Feng Shu expert to assist with designing the park and the attractions to focus on bringing the largest amount of good luck. The company was taking no chances with even the smallest details. Here are some examples of the design. The main ballroom at the Disney Hotel at the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort is 888 square meters because 888 is a number representing wealth. September 12th is considered a lucky day for opening a business. Hong Kong Disneyland was officially opened on September 12, 2005. No clocks were sold at Hong Kong Disneyland stores because in Chinese, the phrase giving clock or song jong sounds like going to a funeral, so selling clocks represents a bad luck. The elevators at the Hong Kong Disney Resort do not have uh, the number 4 and no building, including the resort hotels, has a fourth floor. The number four is considered unlucky in the Chinese culture because when pronounced, it sounds like the Chinese word for death. The Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel and Disney Hollywood Hotels were built in a carefully selected locations with water nearby in a southwest direction to maximize prosperity from Feng Shu. Also, various Earthly elements important in Feng Shui, such as wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, were carefully balanced throughout the resort. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening. I really hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy this fireworks show from Disneyland.